This video will demonstrate the initial setup steps for creating and scheduling instructional webcasts using Google Hangouts on Air. First, you'll need to log in to Google+. And if you already have a Google account, you already have access to Google+. If you don't have a Google account, or if you don't have a Google account that's dedicated for college materials, you'll need to create one in order to access the webcasting tools that we're covering today. We encourage you to use something other than your personal email account when setting up the Google account you plan to use for instructional materials. You might want to set up a Gmail account that you use specifically for college-related tasks or activities, and if you don't like checking multiple accounts, remember that you can always set that new dedicated account to forward messages to an account that you do check regularly. It's best to do this in order to keep your personal and your professional accounts comfortably divided. Doing so will help you avoid potential problems or awkward moments stemming from your personal and your professional materials becoming too closely linked. Let's get started. Here you will see that I have already logged into my account. I can do this through Gmail, through my Google Drive, which is what I've done here, through YouTube, or any of the other applications that are linked to Google. Within most of those, I have access to a little icon. You'll see it in the upper right-hand corner, and it looks like a box with tiles in it. If you click on that icon, like I'm going to do now, it will bring up a drop-down menu listing all the Google Apps that are available to you. In that drop-down menu, find the Google Plus icon. In this case, it's down toward the bottom left of the drop-down menu. Click on it, and you will be bounced right into Google Plus. Alternatively, you can type into any open browser window the following, plus.google.com, then tap Enter on your computer, this will either bounce you right into Google+, or it will bring you to a new window where you can sign in and access Google+. Once I am within Google+, I want to find the Home button, and it's located on the upper left-hand side of the page. You'll recognize it because it has a cute little picture of a house on it. When you click on that button, a drop-down menu with several options will open. From that menu, we're going to select Hangouts, which is located toward the bottom of the list. Now, when we click on it, a new page will open in the same window. Now, when this page opens, I want to draw attention to two different options, Hangouts and Hangouts on Air. In this screencast, you'll see a large button in the center of the screen that says visit hangoutsgoogle.com. You might see this appear in other places as well. Not too long ago, for example, a similar tab reading simply Hangouts would show up toward the center in the top menu. Hangouts and Hangouts on Air are two completely different tools. Hangouts provides more of a conference call-like experience, which of course can be useful, but that's not the same as a webcast, nor is it what we are looking for. We're looking for Hangouts on Air, the tab or link for which you will find toward the upper center of the screen, right next to the Home tab. Hangouts on Air is where you can set up, create, and schedule either a live stream interactive small group webinar with no more than 10 participants, including you, the host, or a pre-recorded non-interactive webcast for any number of others to watch at a later time. Both options are extremely useful for instructors. In either case, you'll begin your setup the same way. Click on Hangouts on Air. And when you do, a new page will open in the same window where toward the middle, you're going to click a button that says create a hangout on air. This is going to open a new pop-up window as shown here, and it's where we will enter the initial setup details for our webcast. At the top of our pop-up in the first dialog box, we can give the webcast a brief but distinct and recognizable name. As an example, I'm going to name this webcast English 111 Essay Requirements Summary Response. Notice that my name is distinct. I have a specific class, English 111, a specific assignment, Summary Response, and a specific aspect of that assignment, 
the requirements, the basic requirements. You see, I ask students to compose a variety of essay types in my class. So this name will differentiate these requirements from the requirements of other essay types. Note that I did not add the semester or year to the name. I chose not to because my basic requirements remain the same year after year. So I'm going to give my webcast a name that is course and assignment specific, but one that is general enough to use in future semesters should I choose to recycle or rebroadcast this webcast after it's recorded. In the second dialog box, we can offer a brief description. I want mine to grab my students' attention, so it will say, don't give away much needed points on this essay assignment. Join or watch this brief webcast to make sure you have met all the essential requirements. Toward the middle of the pop-up, we can set our start time. It defaults to now. You only want to keep the now option if you want an instant start, meaning this thing is gonna start immediately. More likely, however, you will wanna select later. Choosing later, as you will see, expands the menu options and allows you to set up a future webcast time and date. Understand that the date will default to the current day. Well, let's assume that we're merely in the planning stage and we don't want our webcast to happen on the same day that we're setting it up. If this is the case, we can click the default date and it will generate a drop down calendar. I'm going to go ahead and select a future date. Then, if our webcast is live, we need to select a specific time. So I'm going to select 3 o'clock. Notice that the duration defaults to 30 minutes, but your broadcast, should you have a lot to say, can run up to eight hours. I'm going to just change mine to one hour. You might also note that it says Eastern Time here. The nice thing about Google Hangouts on Air is that it will auto-correct for time zone or auto-adjust for time zone. So if you are teaching an online class with students from all over the country, they will receive notifications that align as appropriate with their time zone. In the audience section, we can designate who we are going to invite to this webcast. We have the option to choose between public or private, and it defaults to public. We, however, recommend that you avoid public and make your webcasts private, Wake Tech centric. Our students have paid for our expertise, so we don't want any old person out there on the internet viewing our materials. To make it private, find the public option and click on the X. That then makes your broadcast unlisted, private. If the webcast I am planning is going to run live and be interactive, I would also want to invite specific people. And there are several ways to do this. I could type in their email addresses, or I could create circles in Google and send invites out to specific people in specific circles. I, however, am only going to invite myself because I'm going to share the link later with specific students. Remember, only 10, including myself, can participate in a live webcast. The recording, however, can be short shared with as many students as I like. For now, this is it. You've got everything set up, so we're going to go ahead, click the share button, and you'll see that it will eventually kick me out to my Google Plus page where I can see at the very top my webcast and edit, share the event, do all sorts of good stuff with it that you will learn more about in our next tutorial.